Hello there, welcome to CXC Math TV. Today we're going to be doing a full worksheet video on functions and relations and this is using past paper questions. Really, really, really nice. So this question is taken from June 2009 and it says a coach of an athletic club has six athletes. U, V, W, X, Y, and Z. In his training camp, he makes an assignment of F of at least U, V, X, Y, and Z to physical activities. 1, 2, 3, 4, according to the diagram. We see the diagram right here, the mapping diagram. And let's hear what the question say. Express F as the set of ordered pairs. So if we're going to express F as the set of ordered pairs, right, we realize U maps to 1, V maps to 2, V maps to 3, nothing do map to W, X map to 1, Y map to 3, and Z map to 4. So let's express it as the set of ordered pairs. So we're just going to put F as an ordered pair, that is, open bracket, we'll see, u maps to 1 we also see v maps to 2 v maps to 3 x map to 1 we also see y maps to 3 and well we shouldn't put and you put your comma and z maps to 4. Alright, and that is f as an ordered pair. And you're getting 4 marks to do with that. Wow. That's beautiful. Now it says state two reasons why the assignment f from set a to set b is not a function. Now I hope you're thinking about it. Why is this not a function? Why? Now this is not a function because w doesn't map and v maps twice so remember we said that for it to be a function all the elements in the domain must map and we must say that it must map to only one element in the codomain so now let's nice it up right we want to show that you know we're we're top students so one we're gonna say athlete w gets no assignment to do oh. so that's one reason why it's not a function and two we're gonna say athlete athlete v gets two activities thus being overworked All right, so they're overworking athlete V. All right, well, you do have to pretty it up this way. All right, you can write it in a normal way. I'll do it around here. You can write it in a normal way to just say, um, F is not a function. F is not a function. Since you can tell them that W does not map. And then two, you can tell them also because V maps twice. But you know, you don't want to write it so plain and boring, right? This is plain and boring. I would prefer you write it this way. Exciting. Athlete W only get no assignment. And athlete V gets two. So clearly it's not a function. <sighs> now it says, hence with minimum changes to F, Construct a function g from set a to set b as a set of ordered pairs. Making minimum changes to f, we need to make g a function. So if we're going to make g a function, we need w to map to something, and we need to remove one of the mapping from v. In other words, this is what we're going to get. So what we're going to get is a set g, or as an ordered pair, u is okay so u maps to one that is fine 
V maps to 2 or V maps to 3, but can't be both. We're going to just map V to 2. Ah. Then W, we need to map W to something. I am going to map W to 4. It doesn't matter which element you map W to. Hey. And then X goes to? X goes to 3. Actually, X went to 1. My apologies. Minimum changes, so we don't want to trouble what we don't have to trouble. And Y map to 3. And Z maps to 4. Alright, and that's by making minimum changes to F. Notice U still maps to 1 in G. V still maps to 2. X still maps to 1. Y still map to 3 and Z still map to 4. The only two changes we made was to give W an assignment so it can become a function and remove one of the assignments from athlete V so that V is not overworked. That's all we did. Now the next part of the question says determine how many different functions are possible for G in part 3 above. Right? How many possible functions are there? Now, first thing is, if you're to really observe, look at this right here. What we can see is that we can map V to either 2 or 3, right? So since we can map V to either 2 or 3, that's really 2 possibility right there. there. Alright, let's look at it. So V... V can be mapped to 2 or V can be mapped to 3, right? You could have chose any one of those in G right here. So that's 2 times. Now you're probably wondering why times. Now look at this. We also have to make changes to W. W could have been mapped to 1 or W can be mapped to 2 or W can be mapped to 3 or W can map to 4 right ah. so those are two options for v and four options for w so two times four is going to equal to eight so there are eight different ways we could have expressed the function g now if you're not seeing it look at it what we're saying is you could choose let's write it in black down here you could choose v going to one and w going to one V going to 2, sorry, and W going to 1. Or you could choose V going to 2 and W going to 2. And you could choose V going to 2 and W going to 3. And you choose V going to 2 and W going to 4. Notice that's 4 options. Then the other 4 options would be when you choose V going to 3 and W going to 1. Or V going to 3 and W going to 2. Or V going to 3 and W going to 3. And V going to 4 and W going to 4. So, see, there are four possible options right there. All right? No problem. And that's how we do this question. And we complete it and we're nice. All right. Now, this question is taken from Pure Mathematics, June 2013. And it says, let A be the set such that X is a real number and a function F is such that it maps set A to set R and is defined by F of X equal to X squared minus X. Show that the function F is 1 to 1. All right, so if we need to show that the function is 1 to 1, how are we going to go about doing this? Well, in order to show that a function is injective, this is the test that we use. So the test that we use is we solve f of a equal to b. We solve f of a equal to f of b. And then what we're supposed to get is a equal to b, right? That is how we test for injectivity. So let us go ahead and test and see if that is in indeed true. So f of a would be equal to f of b. In that case, we would get x squared minus my apologies, when we replace x with a, this becomes a squared minus a, and that's equal to b squared minus b. Now look what I'm going to do right here. I'm going to bring the b squared over to this side and the a over to the right side. So I'm going to write it as a squared minus b squared equal to a minus b. 
I hope that is okay with everyone. Now look at this. Can't I then say a square minus b square minus in bracket a minus b equals zero? Now you probably wonder why would I do that? Because if I bring over the a minus b to the left, but I don't want to write it as minus a plus b. I want to keep it as a minus b. Because a square minus b square, that's the difference of two square. I can break this up as a minus b multiplied by a plus b minus a minus b. Ah, so look at that. Now I can factor out a, a minus b and I would be left back with a plus b minus 1 and all of that is equal to 0. Now if I go ahead and do that, right? Now look at this. If I do that, if the product of two numbers is 0, then it's either a minus b equals 0 or a plus b minus 1 is equal to 0. Ah, no problem. Now, once we do that, then we're going to have, once we do that, we're going to have a minus b equals 0, and that is suggesting a equal b. Or, from right here, what we have is a plus b minus 1 equals 0, so that is suggesting that a plus b is equal to 1. Now, that is not suggesting a is equal to b. But guys, look at this. The question told us that x is greater than or equal to 1. So when we had choose x to be equal to a and x to be equal to b, in other words, we're saying a is also greater than or equal to 1 and b is also greater than or equal to 1. So if you add a plus b, that must be greater than or equal to 1 plus 1, which is 2. So how a plus b is equal to 1, this makes no sense. So we're going to put not valid because a plus b should be bigger than 2. So the only option in this case is a equal to b. And since a is equal to b, we can conclude, therefore, f of x, which is x squared minus x, on the domain when x is greater than or equal to 1, is injective. That shows that the function is one to one. That's how you would do that right there. Nice. Now, I know many persons like to think about the horizontal line test. I didn't forget that. If you're a big fan of the horizontal line test, I'm going to do it method two right here. So for those who are big fan of the horizontal line test, so method two. So for those that are big fan of the horizontal line test, so we're going to have f of x is equal to x squared minus x. And this is when x is greater than or equal to 1, right? No problem. Now since x is greater than or equal to 1, right, we're going to sketch the graph. But first we need to complete the square. Complete the square for this quadratic by putting it in its vertex form. That would be x minus, that would be x minus a half the coefficient, a half the coefficient of the x right here is what? Half the coefficient of the x, half of 1 is a half, so that's x minus a half square, that will subtract a half square. That works out to be x minus a half square minus a quarter. In other words, if we were to sketch the graph of f of x, right, this is just a sketch now that we're going to do. If we were to sketch a graph of it, the minimum point would be, this is y and x, the minimum point would be when x is positive a half, the y value is negative a quarter. So we have a half, negative a quarter. So this would be the minimum point, right? And so we know then that the quadratic would look something like this, right? I'm just using dotted lines. Something like this is how the quadratic would look. Passing through the origin. Why does it pass through the origin? Because there's no constant. x squared minus x, there's no plus c, right? So c is zero. So it passed through the origin. Now remember, we want the portion of the graph that is what? 
greater than or equal to 1. So since we're focusing on the portion of the graph that's greater than or equal to 1, we need to start from when x is 1. When x is 1, that's our root right here. So this is a portion of the graph that we want. Ah. Ah. So that means we can erase the other portions of the graph. Yep, we can just erase these dotted lines. Those have no significance at all. We erase that part of the graph. And now this is how the graph should look, starting from x being 1 and going only upwards. So now we can use our horizontal line test. Using the horizontal line test, the horizontal line test only detects one point of intersection. So we can tell them horizontal line test only detects one point of intersection. And so we can tell them Hence, f is 1 to 1. So hence, we can tell them, hence, f of x equal to x squared minus x is 1 to 1 on the domain x greater than or equal to 1. And that's how you would do it graphically. So I'm just going to narrow down. Let me zoom out. All right, I don't think I can zoom out entire, entirely. <laughs> All right, this is the lowest I can actually get it. I just wanted to see the function. What you do first is complete the square. After you complete the square, you sketch the graph. After you sketch the graph, you use a horizontal line test. And that is how you would do this question, method two. Or... You can just stick to method 1 right here and solve f of a equal to f of b and then show them that of course a works out to be equal to b, hence conclude f is injected.